Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That's in red letters in my Bible. That's what the king said about his kingdom. He said that. We learn that seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness is desiring before all things the rule of the king and his culture. And we spent some time on that. And we're going to spend some time in, this is good stuff. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time to grow up. Tell them to put your big boy pants on. Amen. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for revelation. Thank you for, you, you don't, you said I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You also said to bless the chastising of the Lord because that's from love. Thank you for trying to correct us and showing us how your kingdom operates. Because you want us to operate within the system of the kingdom. Your covenant, your kingdom, your regulations, your commandments, statutes, and ordinances. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. You may be seated. Picking up from where we were last week. As for carnal Christians, they will not be driven away from the presence of God. But the blessings of the kingdom will most certainly be out of the reach. Because God hides things for us, not from us. Scripture references to that, you do not have to put them on the screen because we spent time on that last week where we read each one. But Proverbs 25, 2, Deuteronomy 4.29. Jeremiah 29, 13, Matthew 7, 7, and Acts 17, 27. You can get that information from the scripture. So the casual or the carnal Christian doesn't seek. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. See, there's no added unto to the carnal or casual Christian because they never seek. They don't even halfway look. They just don't. There's a point in time they realize that, you know, I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. And they can believed in their heart and confessed with their mouth. And from that day forward, they kind of just... Thank you. I got it from here, God. They don't want to grow. They don't want to change. They like their eternal destination, but they don't want to deviate from their earthly, um, what they do in the, in the flesh, how they operate, their daily walk. They don't even halfway look, and that's why they have been awarded that title as casual or carnal Christians. In some cases, even what the casual Christian has will be taken away. I've got two scripture references. Write this down. Matthew 25, 14 through 28. And what we're going to do on the screen is we're going to throw up Luke 19, 12 through 26. And I know he'll have it on the screen, but I want to read it out of my Bible if that's all right. Luke 19, 12 through 26. And he said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. Occupy till I come. Do business. That's what that means, till I come. Do business till I come. That's a strange sound in a lot of different places to a lot of different Christians. Do business. What, God's got some kind of new like cryptocurrency or something? What in the world is he talking about? That's what he said. Do business till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, I will not have... And this man to reign over us. And it came to pass 
When he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him to whom he had given the money that might know how much every man had gained by trading. Do business till I come. Do business till I come. Then came the first, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained ten pounds. And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in very little, thou shalt have authority over ten cities. And in Matthew, it's faithful over little, ruler over much. See, there was the test. There was the, there was the prove, and then there was the approved. And as we go down through here, Anybody qualified for this promotion if they did business till he come. Amen. You know, let's do go back to Matthew. Leave that there. Fourteen through twenty-eight. Are you having fun yet? I am. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto him his goods. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. Same principle. To every man, listen, but this is why I went back. To every man according to his several ability. In other words, what he's able to do. If God automatically out of the gate is going to give you a little more than somebody else, that's just not because he just has favoritism. It's according to their ability. Just like somebody asked one time, when, you know, when our pastor was you know, leaving the East Coast and going to the West Coast many years ago, said, man, it wouldn't be crazy if he called you up, tapped you on the shoulder and just said, go ahead and take this church. And I said, nope. I go, why not? I said, I'd dwindle it down to nothing. Because it's that, that, that's beyond my ability. Could I grow into it? I hope so. That's our goal. Have hundreds of tithers and laborers, be debt free, be a regional church, make a dent in this region. Even have the lost and heathen be like, I don't know what we'd do if that place closed down. Yeah, I'm hoping for it. But it, that would be beyond my ability. I couldn't handle those five talents. But maybe I could handle two. But here's what I know. He's faithful. That if you're faithful over two, next time he'll give you five. What are you doing with what he gave you? First things first. Everybody's always looking for the better and more. Let me just break it down. Hallelujah. We're going to be here a while. I know. You're looking at that brand new car. Lord, I'd love to have that. My car, I mean, thank you that it gets me back and forth, but, you know, it's a little this, a little that sometimes, and it just sure would be nice to have a new one. And you go out and look at your car. It's filthy on the outside, dirt everywhere. I'm talking about big mud clogs underneath the door frames. Hadn't been vacuumed, and I don't know if it ever been vacuumed. McDonald's bags, Wendy's bags, Whataburger bags, Burger King bags, Subway bags, Popeye's bags. <laughs> and you're really going to God about a new car, and He's going to ask you, What did you do with what I gave you? Yeah, yeah. yeah but it's a, it might be a, Yeah, it's better. But what are you doing with your yeah, butter? Are you keeping it clean? Are you keeping it nice as you can? I mean, there's no way that the interior is going to be nearly as nice as the news car's interior, but is it clean? Right. You can clean. Yes. You can pick things up. Yes. Have you blessed the car lately, or you just cursed the car? So maybe you can't handle the new one yet. And you've not been approved because you've not been proved. You took the test and it's not ready. 
Because he's not going to grade you on what could be. He's going to grade you on what you've got. What have you done with what he gave you right now? Hallelujah. And we had received the five talents, went and traded, traded, occupied till I come, did business. He has given each one of us gifts. You know, don't over-spiritualize this. If you can make money like nobody else, how have you furthered the kingdom with that? And it's not just about, well, you know, just sit in the back church, shut your mouth, but open your checkbook. You don't want to attend a place like that. They don't care about you. But if you're that good, and this is in the message today, if I get to it, right? If you're that good with money, are you helping somebody who's not? But what we're going to get into today, if you're those that have nots, if you got too much pride and you ain't going to come up under nobody, stay broke. What if you have the gift of decorating? I couldn't put two colors together. Matter of fact, I don't know what color it's going to be outside underneath the awning. I'm going to let Pastor Kimberly, Terrence, and Steve decide what color it's going to be. I just said make sure that everything's uniformed and looks nice. Because I've been known to wear khaki and gray together. My wife <laughs> has scolded me and gave me a life lesson that you don't do that. Thank God for Pastor Tim. <laughs> well, I can go into a rooms to go or somewhere and I can see nice things together. There's no way I could have put those things together. Well, when the church, when we, when we, not if, when we, look at your neighbor and say when, when, we start growing, wouldn't it be cool to have a different looking foyer every so often? Yes. With a budget that, and then somebody who has that gift to be able to decorate a little bit different? So. Yes. How awesome. So what gift do you have? What do you bring to the table? I've said it before. What if you're really good at, you know, what if you do hair? You got, you know, you're trying to get a, a salon and, you know, you, your own salon. Are you faithful over that one chair that you've been given? And has there ever been a time where you just even, oh, hey, pastor, I don't know, uh, if you ever have a you know an event or something, another game night or anything, you know, I'm just I'm willing to bring my services out here and give some free haircuts. What are you doing with what he gave you? Or are you just consuming it on your own lusts? What you can get out of it for yourself instead of giving. You know what? That talent that you've got, you didn't earn it. God gave you that. That's a gift. That's a gift. I mean, Kimberly's dad is unbelievable. I look at a backyard when construction's being done. I look at a backyard and I see dirt. <laughs> That's all I see. That man can see a completed landscaping. I mean, the right trees, the right flowers, the right this. I mean, just beautiful. I've seen him do it over, you know, the, the two different homes they moved into. He took bland and boring and made it interesting and inviting and just was like, That's awesome. I can't do that. I'm not, I, didn't, I wasn't given that gift. Yeah. What are you doing? We, everybody has something. Yeah. Even, you know, cleaning wise. Thank God Miss Dolores did what she did the other day. Because I walked into the men's bathroom and was like, that's funky. <laughs> well, she went in and cleaned it and it smelled better. It's kind of like this. People don't care if somebody puts toilet paper in the ladies' bathroom or not until the ladies go into the ladies' bathroom and there's no toilet paper. Exactly. <laughs> well, some people have the gift of that, just the gift, the management gift of that. I mean, they're like, they, for the, listen, to them it's just not a passing thought. They really care. Yeah. Is the toilet paper stocked? Is the soap stocked? Yeah. Is there enough paper towels there? Is the floor clean? Does it smell okay in here? Thank God for people who do that. 
See, it takes a team for the task. It takes all of us working together. What have you done with what he gave you? And he made other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two talents, he also gained other two. I wonder what God could do with what he gave you if you gave what he gave you back to him. Man, I'm telling you, my when I was in the world and I gave guitar lessons, if there was a light schedule, it didn't stay light very long. And I'm talking about when I was self-employed. Because I had so many people. I remember a single mom, and, and her son was talented. He was talented. He's not like one of these that you're just sitting there, and the, the student looks at you like... Oh, God, 28 minutes. And you look at the student and you're like, oh God, 28 more minutes. <clears throat> hey, it's true. I'm just going to be real with you out there. I couldn't wait for them to leave the room just as much as they couldn't wait to leave the room. I dreaded seeing them next week as much as they dreaded seeing me. Because I wasn't going to waste their, their parents' money and I wasn't going to let them just be like, a lot of people, just stay on your tablet, chew some gum, don't bother me and I won't bother you. And Oh, no. You step in foot in class, we're going to learn something. Yeah. Yeah. And they knew that if you didn't get it by next week, guess what your assignment is? This one again. Yeah. And if you don't get it the next week, guess what? You get to do this again. Because when you learn something correctly, it's line upon line. You can't skip over, you can't solo like somebody that you, you know, without learning the basics. You don't know the, you can't read without going through the alphabet. Come on now. Hallelujah. But what I would do is that there was, there was, a, there was a single mom and she had a son who was good and he was attentive and he was learning. He had talent and he had skill. And uh, he said, well, I'm going to have to quit taking lessons for just a little while. I said, okay, well, is everything okay? You got, you know, school sports or, you know, what, what's going on? He just kind of put his head down and I said, I said, I know you don't want to say anything. I said, kind of fun's kind of getting a little tight right now. And he just kind of did his head. So I went out and I talked to his mom. I said, well, I can't wait to give him a lesson next week. And she's like, Oh, didn't he tell you? And I said, no, I'm telling you. I'm going to see him next week. Yeah, but I can't. I didn't say you had to. What are you saying? You're going to teach? I said, yeah, I'll teach you. Well, I can't give you back pay. I'm not asking for back pay. He's got a gift and he's got a talent. It's better he's in here than out on the street somewhere hanging out with some hoodlums. I said, so don't worry about it. Whenever you're able to pick it up again, pick it up again. I said, is this a good time and slow? Oh, yeah. I, said, I was so glad I got this day and this time. It works out so good for us. I said, well, then we'll just keep it. When you're able to pay again, pay again. Amen. And you know what happened? All them other spots that were empty, you know what God did? <laughs> Filled up the max capacity. And I would do that for anyone. Listen. Listen. Anyone that had interest and that showed potential of wanting to do something. Well, what about that one that come in class that you were dreading to give lessons and they were dreading to give lessons and they were like, well, we can't afford it anymore. I'd be like, golly, that's just a bummer. That's a bummer, young Poor little feller. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Accountability. Are you accountable with what he gave you? But he that received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. Are you hiding your talent? <laughs> You'll flaunt it for the world if you can get ahead with it. But you might hide it when it comes to his kingdom. Mm. 
After a long time, the Lord of those servants coming and reckoned with them, so that he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. He acknowledged that you gave those to me. Those come from you. And behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. And he said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee rule over many things. Do you see that principle? Yeah. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Some people skip over that. Well, I just can't find joy and peace in my life. Well, use what he gave you for his glory and you'll find joy. Yeah. I remember one of the first times, and I had joy about this. I was, this was, gosh, we hadn't been here too long. Anyways, I was at a, at a, at a at, before there was Club for Fitness. I'm plugging Club for Fitness because I just like it. I prefer it. That's my thing. If you don't agree with me, that's fine. Whatever you want to do. But I was at the other place for a while at Planet Fitness. <clears throat> and there was a lady that worked there behind the counter and um, was just, you know, friendly, being nice to people back and forth. And, you know, she found out we was a pastor. So obviously she, she opened up a little, about, a little bit about something. Kind of had a relationship, you know, built up. Uh, a little bit and the months went by and she was just so happy she's like pastor God did it God opened doors I got my own apartment now I said awesome and she's like I, you know I'm believing for him, for him to fill it too but at least I got qualified and you know I'm I'm up on my feet and I can get in and things are good and that filling it part wouldn't leave so I went next door to a thrift store because God told me to go there and there was like a brand new couch, like nice. We're not talking about don't turn, you know, don't turn the, uh, what's those things? That, oh, cushions, thank you. Like, don't turn the cushion over. You don't want to see the other side of that cushion. <laughs> Wasn't one of those, right? Yeah. I mean, it's like, man, this is, I mean, you can, you, you, you can tell it's not off the showroom floor, but this is in pristine condition. How much you want for it? They told me, and I'm like, can you deliver it? Well, yeah, but it's going to be you know, a little bit this of a fee. I was like, okay, no problem. And I went back to her, and I said, what's your address? And she's like, what? Well, you know your place. What's the address? Got the address. And I said, okay. I said, you take, I said, you're going to have a delivery coming to you. I said, you got a new couch coming. And she's like, what, what, what? Oh, she was just so thrilled that she had a couch coming to her. And listen, you know, where we were at that time, did it like kind of hit our personal finances? Yeah. I told Pastor Kimley, I said, I can't take you on a date for two weeks. <laughs> our date nights are important to us, okay? We learn self-care. And I told her why, and she's like, that's okay. And you know what? I, we got so much joy out of that that she had a couch Praise God. because we had to be able to give. Yeah. What are you doing with what God gave you? Are you sowing it into the kingdom? Or are you using it for his glory? The two talents, the same deal. Well done. Go to verse 24. Then he which had received one talent. I wonder if this is why the Lord only gave him one talent. Remember, he gave them to the, what, you know, their ability. He couldn't handle one. He ain't going to handle two. Surely ain't going to handle five. And that's why you just need to be honest with yourself. Don't be hating on somebody who's got five talents and you got one. You can work your way up to it. At least be honest. I can't handle five talents. See, everybody likes the good fruit of more. I had a message series on this one time. More means more, though. What do I mean more means more? More means more of everything. Yeah. Everything. The good and the, the bad. Yeah, Jesus. Well, I want a business where I got 25 people employed under me. Okay. You ready to deal with the, uh, the taxes on all that? And everything you got to keep up, you ready for that? A 
Have you already got a plan in place that if you've got a few ladies employed and they're going through a pregnancy and they got to be out for a while, you're going to have to deal with that on your crew? Or somebody just gets injured on the job, what if they want to sue you? You ready to be sued? Got awful quiet in here now, didn't it? You just thought about getting that new house in that new neighborhood finally. How about the fact that it's close to Christmas time and the sales haven't been that great, whether it's goods or services, and and all things break down to goods or services. Service hasn't been great, goods hadn't been great, and it's November, and Black Friday just did not go as well as you wanted it to. You're into uh, goods, and you got 25 people that's got 20, that's 25 families, and there's 25 families that are expecting to have a Christmas bonus and to be able to provide for their family for Christmas. Yeah. Now you got that on you too. Yeah. See, if all of you are just thinking about is getting that new car and living in that new neighborhood, you're not ready yet. Because more means more. You've got to learn how to handle all the aspects of growth. And that's why a lot of people start their businesses and they last about a year. Why? Because they like the idea of generating money for themselves. They like the idea of being their own boss. But they don't like the idea of sitting and planning and strategizing, marketing. Sometimes you've got to spend money to make money. They don't like the fact that, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm just, oh, hallelujah, I feel the Holy Ghost on this as much as it sounds practical. They don't count the costs. And they think, well, I'm going to get in business that my income's going to jump up. No, your income's actually going to go down because any profit that you have don't go to you. It goes back to your business. It's going to be a while before you're profitable. And so a little time goes by and why well, this is not what I thought. Well, of course it's not because you didn't think it through. That's the problem. You never thought. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. And we had received one talent, came and said, Lord, I knew that thou wast a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not stewarded. Now that's a lie because it said that he gave him of his own. Now he's blaming the Lord of being a thief. Remember we talked about accountability last last week or was it the week before last? We went over sin and what that means and it's like it's you know it, it has it's different from some than the others. If you hadn't heard that, you're like, oh, that sounds like blasphemy. Go back and listen to it. The scriptures will speak for themselves. I'm not going to reteach what I've already taught. Amen. It's out there for anybody free. No charge means. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you really want to know, you can go back and check it out. Knowing that I'm biblically sound. I'm not jumping on some kind of heresy wagon. But he thought he was a thief. Verse 25. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. That's what fear will do for you. You can't make no progress with fear. False evidence appearing real. That's an acronym for fear. F-E-A-R. False evidence appearing real. Fear will paralyze you. You've got so much fear. Now if you want to get rid of it, come to faith school on a regular basis. Amen. But I was afraid and hid thy talent. 26, his Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant. Now look, he's not saying that I am a thief in this next, a lot of people's like, was well, Jesus saying I'm a thief? No, he's saying if that's what you really believed, I'm going to hold you accountable to what you believe. That's what's going on right here. Thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not and gather what I have not stored. In other words, I'm going to make you accountable on what you know to believe within yourself. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received my own with usury or interest. Nothing else. Put it in a five-year CD. 
You didn't do nothing with it. But you thought I was that way. You thought I was that hard and everything else. Well, then you, I'm going to hold you accountable to what you thought. So if that's the case, why didn't you at least do this? Remember, the Lord will meet you where you're at, not where you pretend to be. He holds you accountable for what you see and know, not what you don't. Ignorance can be mercy. Take that. Listen. Listen to what he says. Verse 28. Is that on the screen, 28? This is going to go contrary to this country you live in. But my citizenship is in another country. Amen? I hold dual citizenship. Can I throw something else in here too? I'm going to throw this in here. And just like, see, I'm going deep real quick, but I can't stay on it. You just have to either get it or get it later. But just like I'm a citizen of this country and I speak its language, I'm also a citizen of another country and I speak its language. Let me put that together with what was done earlier. Take therefore the talent from him what do you mean, from the, from the one talent guy? Oh, we're going to protest on that one. We're going to hold our signs. We're going to sit in the road and we're going to block the highway and not let anybody. How in the world could somebody take the one talent from the one who only has one talent? Well, the Lord did. And guess what? You can't file a lawsuit against him. There's none of that junk when he comes back. He's the king. Take therefore the talent from him. And this is what, this is, this, if that wasn't ruffling feathers of a lot of people, this right here going to make them red hot, red hot. Listen, listen, listen. And give it to him which has ten talents. Yeah. Why couldn't he at least give it to somebody who only has one talent too? They need talent. Everybody needs a little help these days. Well, you're thinking like an American. You're not thinking like kingdom. You will be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If you're limiting yourself to that kind of thinking, you'll never, you, you can't grow in the kingdom. You won't be, when you, when you get tested, you'll fail. But if you can get change your thinking, renew your mind, when you get proved, then you can be approved. Why did he take the one talent and give it to the one who has ten? Because he knows what to do with it. Yeah. Our God is about fruit from the beginning. When Adam opened up his eyes for the first time ever, became a, living, a speaking spirit created in the image of God, one of the first words he heard was, Be fruitful and multiply. If you'll read through the gospel, especially you know in the, in the book of John, chapter fifteen, it talks about how he he listen. He expects us to bear fruit. There's parables like in Luke thirteen that if you don't bear fruit, That's right. cut it down. Right. Why encumber the ground? Because listen, he's a just God. And cutting down that tree, that poor tree, that tree didn't do nothing to you. Well, that's the whole problem. It didn't do nothing. That tree was in the same ground, got the same sun, got the same amount of rain, got the same care for the caretaker as the other ones that were bearing fruit around it. He's serious about bearing fruit. Have you ever been around a Christian who like, they're older, they had to be older to do this, young and free growing up, did the, you know, got things of God, but just kind of got away from God for a long time and find themselves being an older person? And to be honest with you, they just wish things were as good as they used to be. Could it be that you hid that so much for so long, the Lord said, all right, here, 
you know what to do with it. Well, you, I can't believe that you, you took my, listen, listen, I can't believe that you took my talent, Lord. The Lord will say it wasn't yours to begin with. Go ahead, everybody in here, take a deep breath. That's a gift. That's a gift right there. How many times have you thought, thanked the Lord for breathing? And until you've been in a situation where the doctors are telling you you ain't going to make it, you might not appreciate walking outside and feeling the sun on your face. Do they still love me, Pastor Kimberly? Amen. What have you done with what he gave you? You see, if you live your life with the concept of ownership instead of the concept of kingdom, which is stewardship, you're not going to get it right. It was never yours to begin with. Me being able to play the guitar and, 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 and do that was a gift. Believe me, I taught kids for years. Some will get it and some won't. That's why I quit giving vocal lessons because it was even, even worse there. I think it's, I th I'm serious. Either you got it or you don't. If you got it, it can be developed. If you don't, you can't. It's like keeping the kid in math class that just is not good in math and everybody's pressing him to take advanced math class because it looks good on a college, college resume. Look, they're having problems with general math. Yeah. Don't do that to them. And so, you know, I guess I'll just go ahead and... Why not? I don't know. People who keep giving voice lessons to people who will never be good singers, just quit taking people's money. Be honest with them. Just tell them they ain't got it. If they don't care and they still want to do it anyways because it's fun, that's one thing. But don't, you know, amen. amen. Don't promise something that you can't deliver, that they can't deliver. Don't, false advertisement, don't do it. Amen. I did because I quit doing it because there's just so many that I'm like, nah, you, it ain't going to happen, Junior. Amen. For unto everyone that hath, verse 29, shall be given that hath what? That hath took what they have been given and done something with it. And he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not, because you didn't do anything with what was given to you, shall be taken away even that which he hath. Amen. Amen. Stewardship, ownership. First things first. You've got to understand that when you gave your life to him, that, listen, you gave your life to him. Amen. And that even when you were a hater and a heathen and didn't believe in God, he still had mercy to let the sun still shine on your face. To let you have air in your lungs. To give you taste buds to enjoy tasty foods. Like a Texas barbecue beef rib. Mm. The men that went on the men's outing to the barbecue place, wasn't that some good tasting stuff? Especially that one booth that me and Terrence went into. We just looked at each other and just shook, shook our head and we just kept saying, but the meat though, but the meat. You know, even heathens can enjoy stuff like that. And God gave him the ability. Bless your heart if you think you come from a single cell amoeba all the way to the point where you can grab a good piece of barbecue and enjoy the flavor of it. You don't have to have flavor to be able to be a, a, a living being. Some of you hadn't even thought about that, have you? Just to exist, if you were just born from the slime pool, and you're just a product of billions of years of mutation, you don't have to have all the things that are pleasurable that he gives to, to, to all people, even people that hate him. You don't have to see in color. And I know some people are colorblind, so this is not a throw on you. But most are not. Isn't it 
wonderful to see a beautiful sunset? Well, how about being able to feel things and, you know, on a cool spring morning or a fall morning that we have about four days out of the year here? If you're not a local, you didn't get it. <laughs> be able to feel that cool breeze hit you and be like, man, that's just awesome. Yes, it is. And you want to just bring your chair out and sit it on your carport or something like that or to walk to park because it just feels so good. Well, you don't have to have all that to, to live. And while you're so unique and we were made in the image of God is that we, like any other species that ever has been or ever will be. We are a speaking spirit. Yes. Yes. God created everything through what? Words. Words. And we're the only species that is able to use what? Words. And but just but to choose the words we speak. Yes. Yes. We have choice. If you see us if you have a full moon pop up, a wolf can't help it but how? If you see a cat wanting to get comfy, you can't help but just start scratching something, whatever they do. That's what they do. They don't have choice. We have choice. We have free choice. First things first. Stand to your feet. Are you being an owner or are you being a steward? Are you occupying till he comes with what was delivered unto you? Maybe this is the first time. Maybe you know. Maybe you and God will have a very interesting conversation a little bit later today. Gosh, I hadn't thought about God, but yeah, everything that you've given me, you've given me, comes from you. And once again, I don't want to criticize other people in other places because this is going to sound horrible. Please just understand the principle because the people that I'm getting ready to, to talk about, they can... Listen, they can find Jesus and he can deliver them out of anything. But you could have been born in the middle of the Amazon jungle and it was raised with dirt floors with a tin hut. In a tin hut. You didn't even thank God that you were born in this country. Because believe me, as messed up as it is, there's a lot worse places. How about even thanking him for that? That's why the, I think it was one of the reasons why the Lord raised up America, because we could reach out with our abundance. You can't give what you don't have. He let us be a country that has so we can give. Amen. And you know what? We got local too. I know we got a few in here that are very passionate about that. When we grow, we're going to do more locally. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, I switched coverings. Was under a covering of those who had missions in mind. And there's nothing wrong with that. Going to the world and, you know, doing stuff. Well, man, I tell you what, I looked around Mobile and I'm saying, we got some pretty bad stuff here. So there's others that have, a, you know, they have a, a heart for Africa or a heart for South America and, I have a heart for Mobile. Yeah. I have a heart for the for the Gulf Coast. Amen? Amen. That we can't give what we don't have. I wonder how many people we're waiting on before the Lord explodes this place because we need certain people and places to do certain things. I don't have it all figured together. I give myself to the Word of God in prayer, as the Bible says. I feed the flock of God, like the Bible says, and I equip the saints for the work of the ministry, like the Bible. I don't have certain gifts and talents and skills and anointings. I'm an apostle who teaches, and we have a pastor here. There's evangelists and prophets that come into the house. Man, I tell you what, I'm just excited to get three or four people that are just as passionate about the homeless as Paula is. I'd be excited to have you know three or four men that is just as excited about raising up young men to be men as Steve is. Wow. It doesn't start at home, y'all. 
Because I already know there's some of y'all that's been here long enough that people in your life has been like, you just don't seem the same. You're a little different. Well, amen. That's right. If you can enter God's house week after week and there's no change in your life, man, you need to go somewhere else. <laughs> just say it. Because if you're not bearing fruit, he'll prune you. If you are bearing fruit, to make sure there's more, he'll prune you. So you're pruned if you do, and you're pruned if you don't. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I'm glad we get some laugh out of it. But that's serious. That's the way the Lord operates. Well, I feel like the Lord is just, yeah, you're being pruned. Hallelujah. But you've got to put first things first. First things first. You can't flourish in the kingdom with an ownership mentality. You've got to understand that we are all stewards. You were bought with a price. You are no longer, that's, that's scripture. I'm quoting scripture. You are no longer your own. Yes. Well, I'm just a grown blanket of man. I'll just do what I want to. Did you give your life to Jesus? Well, yeah. Yeah, he's my Savior and Lord. Well, then you were bought with a price. You're no longer your own. Oh, it's a hard concept in this day and we live in. First things first.